Okay, let's continue now with our course review and we're going to look now at part one, strategic inputs. The three topics that we dealt with strategic inputs were an introduction to strategic management, which included discussion of the strategic management process uh, and strategic competitiveness. And the topic two, which was on external environment and topic three, which was on the internal environment. Quite important to our discussion of um, topic 1b was the strategic management process. But we also defined some key terms, strategic competitiveness, strategy, strategy itself, competitive advantage, above average returns, and the strategic management process. And we discussed two models that explain how firms achieve above average returns, the industrial organization model and the resource-based model. And for most of the course, we focused on the resource-based view, though obviously in strategy implementation and development, both the um, external focus and the internal focus, the external focus on the environment, the external focus on the resources of the company were important, which led us to having this model of the strategic management process. The external and internal environment lead us to having our strategic intent and our strategic mission. And that leads us to having some questions about uh, actions. And those actions are in formulation and implementation of strategy. The ones we dealt with in this course were business level, competitive dynamics, corporate level, international and cooperative. And then we looked at strategy implementation and the three areas we looked at in strategy implementation were governance, structure and control and leadership. The combination of that flow leads us to strategic competitiveness and above average returns, and we see a feedback loop of these strategic outcomes of strategic competitiveness and above average returns back to our strategy formulation and strategy in strategic actions and strategy formulation stages. And we discuss the IO model and the resource-based model, but I, as you can see, I'm just going to mention them quickly as part of our review. In topic two, we spent a lot of time looking at the external environment. The external environment were about the opportunities and threats that existed in the, the general external environment. We talked about the industry competitive environment, and we talked about competitive analysis and strategic groups. So our three, our four objectives for this week were to explain the importance of analyzing and understanding the firm's external environment, define and describe the general environment and the industry environment, name the six segments and identify the five of the general environment and identify the five competitive forces and explain how they determine an industry's profit potential. So if we look at the broad external environment, we have six um, components of the external environment, the six components of the general external environment are economic, social, cultural, global, technological, political and legal, and demographic. And those areas of focus in the external environment affect the industry environment and the competitor environment. So the external general environment tends to affect the industry environment, the industry, so it affects at the industry level, the industry environment to affects firms. There's, that's broadly and generally the structure. So we need to know what those things mean. We need to know how they can impact upon a, an industry environment. The five forces model of competition was the next area we just did. We need to know the relationships of the components of these things and how they work. And we talked about later in the course how the five forces of competition um, was, uh, were addressed through business and corporate level strategy. So the five forces in Porter's model of the industry environment are the threat of new entrants, the bargaining power of suppliers, the bargaining power of buyers, the threat of substitute products, and um, rivalry among competing firms. So you need to understand all those things and how they may impact on a firm. And we asked you in your coursework to find examples, both of general environment affecting industry and industry environment affecting particular companies so that you could use those as examples of industry and general analysis. We did that in Moodle and we did that in tutorials. 
Interpreting our industry analysis, we define two ways in which the industry was attractive or not attractive. Two ways in which the industry became attractive or not attractive. And the two ways in which the industry became attractive or not attractive are an unattractive industry has low barriers of entry. Suppliers and buyers both have strong positions, which means the company that's trying to deal with this has pressures from both sides. Strong threat of substitute products and intense rivalry among competitors. When we talked about an attractive industry, by contrast, an attractive industry had high barriers to entry, suppliers and buyers in weak positions, few threats of substitute products and moderate rivalry. So we had these two sets of competing forces on the companies, which created one set of forces one set of strengths of forces creates an attractive environment. One set of strengths of enforcers creates an unattractive environment. But they can link together between each other um, as a continuum so that you can have different combinations of those forces. But an attractive industry is this one. An unattractive industry is the other set of forces applying how they're applied. Same forces, just whether they're weak or strong, high or low. In week three, we moved our focus to the internal environment. And even though I'm only going to show two slides about the internal environment, one of the reasons for showing just those two slides is because they actually are encapsulate the total uh, theoretical models that we talked about during the course. You will need to know, however, the underlying theory and practices, the underlying components of these two models. So we explained why firms needed to understand the external environment. We discussed the value and importance of, um, I'll be sorry, I'll start that again. We discussed value and the importance of value as a concept. We described differences between tangible and intangible resources and how you could take those tangible and intangible resources and turn them into capabilities that then could lead to core competencies. And we described the four criteria that determine if resources and capabilities are in fact core competencies. And then we talked about different combinations of those resources and capabilities and how they would impact upon above average, uh, the performance, above average returns, parity, below average returns, and sustainable or non-sustainable or temporary competitive advantage and disadvantage. So let's look at that model. Resources and ta uh, tangible resources are things like pro like um, uh, um, buildings and um, uh, patents and access to physical resources. Intangible resources are things like goodwill, intellectual property. That is not patented. It's not registered. It's just like the knowledge of the organization. These lead to you, if they're combined in particular ways, that leads to having capabilities, different capabilities combined in different ways. If it, and that lead, if you combine your capabilities in a particular way, that can develop you a competency. A competency is something that you do well. A core competency is something that you do well that gives you an advantage over other companies. The four criteria for being a core competency is that the, the competency needs to be valuable, so something that's valued by the customer. Rare, something that can't be gotten elsewhere. Costly to imitate. And non-substitutable. If you have all those four things, that's a, a uh, can lead you to having sustainable competitive advantage. How do you find out what your core competence is? It's through value chain analysis that contributes to your core competencies and the value chain that you have in your organization um, the primary and supporting activities and how they are combined leads you to having a competency or a core competency in a particular area. There's more than one pathway within value chain to get to a core competency and that we do, talked a little bit about outsourcing, which is accessing other people's value chains. 
your core competencies leads to competitive advantage. Competitive advantage can lead to strategic competitiveness. But there are different combinations that exist here of core competencies. You ask the questions, is the resource valuable? Resource or capability valuable? Is it rare? Is it hard to imitate? Is it um, uh, non-substitutable? So if the answer is no, it's not rare, it's not valuable, it's not hard to imitate, and it's not non-substitutable, so you can find substitutes. You're at a competitive disadvantage over your competitors, against your competitors, and you'll get below average returns. If you have a resource that's valuable, but not rare, not costly to imitate, and may or may not be substitutable, you're on competitive parity with other companies because they can access the same valuable uh, resource you, because it's either not rare or it's easy to imitate or it's not non-substitutable. And that gets you average returns. If you have a capability that's rare and valuable, but not costly to imitate, and not non-substitutable, you'll get a temporary competitive advantage until someone in, imitates you. You get above, you get average returns. If initially you might get above average returns, but ultimately you get average returns. And finally, if you have a competency that's rare, that's valuable, that's costly to imitate, and that's non-substitutable, you get sustainable competitive advantage and above average returns. And in your class, you are asked in your Moodle tutorials, in class and lectures, in the Moodle forums and in the uh, tutorials, you were given examples of these things or had to find examples of these things so that you could use them to explain this model, the, the resource-based view of the firm, um, the competency-based view of the firm. Okay, so that's our quick review of section one, part one of the course, when we looked at strategic inputs.